Hello, my name is Javier Orozco. I am teaching material science at Universidad Politecnica de Valencia. I will speak about materials and what's their importance in today's world and specifically in buildings. Here we have the precursors of today's nanomaterials. From the discussion uh, at Mat Maltusta in the beginning of the century, we have been advised by different scientists of the end of the world because of ending resources. However, Richard Feynman, in his famous discussion, which he ended with the sentence, there is a lot of space down there, he introduced the concept of nanomaterials and the important spaces at the nanoscale size which will be used today for developing new technologies and new possibilities in materials. Here you have a, a way to work on nanomaterial. That was the most difficult thing at the time because first we couldn't see it, we uh, introduced different uh, electro um, uh, microscopes which allowed to see things and then how to handle them from layer to layer assembly using the polarity of the molecules, molecules then the atom by atom deposition using microscopes which were uh, shooting atoms at the, the precise and accurate positions required inject printings with nano sized uh, drops which are uh, falling onto the material, the electrodeposition, controlling uh, the concentration of uh, the deposition, vacuum processes which allow plasma, which allow even the development of industrial work like roll to roll. All these materials uh, have different applications from water, food to smart sustainable cities and energy, all these are relevant for cities and even energy and clean transport. However, there are additional uh, possibilities uh, connected to cells and biomedicine which are very important for developing future uh, possibilities which we will be seeing uh, very soon. The quantum computing and artificial intelligence is the end point which is just beginning to be developed. The applications of nanoparticles uh, are spiraling and growing day by day. Here you see a few examples on how to capture water from air uh, simply by introducing metal organic frameworks which are trapping uh, water molecules and then by the application of a simple uh, current, electrical current, they are falling, concentrating and we are harvesting water, for example in the desert, uh, for uh, their use uh, even though there is nothing available. Later there are possibilities of uh, introducing more uh, sustainable crops using very few resources like water, uh, feeding only what is required by the plants, controlling their environment and knowing uh, how to deal with different uh, pollutants and even different uh, microbes and uh, organics, uh, pesticides uh, which are becoming a problem for producing food and uh, doing it with very small resources. Later, for energy, there are different approaches from the supercapacitor cells which are supposed to solve the problem of storing energy with batteries, with uh, carbon which is uh, completely available in our uh, nature, completely available in our industry and leaving no traces. Later, we are also developing artificial uh, a transformation from uh, the same way as the chlorophyllic transformation in plants and we are able to produce energy from water uh, with uh, fuel cells. Adapting that to our architecture, to our spaces and doing it in uh, a transparent way is the next challenge to uh, make it widely available without any further problems. Another important fraction is adding functionality like avoiding uh, dirt, like cleaning the atmosphere, like adding sensors or even projecting screens to our corneas through uh, lenses which are applied to our eyes. We will be able even to manufacture houses with 3D printing. In the next few years there will be functional objectives which will allow specific objectives of sustainability in smart sustainable cities both for measuring and then for uh, applying and obtaining specific mm, results. In the field of medicine, the development of genomic vaccines, the development of quantum 
computing will also allow uh, new possibilities of computation of simulation and therefore to be able to develop new solutions. Uh, the last frontier will be clean transport uh, using solid side fuel cells which will uh, leave as a byproduct only water and then purifying at the same time the atmosphere. Uh, all these together are embedded these solutions into uh, existing elements like buildings, like pavements, uh, reproducing uh, functions which are done by nature and capturing information which is very important for controlling the city and for uh, designing it in the future and adapting it to the constantly variating needs of a city. Uh, in the field of nanomedicine there are further things to explore which uh, have yet to be completely developed and uh, monitoring at the same time cells for uh, developing uh, new solutions and controlling uh, the obsolescence of elements in the body. The ending point is uh, doing all this function in a circular way, introducing the reuse of uh, different elements which is very easy at the nanoscale because by splitting the atoms we are able to achieve all these functionalities and repeat it again and again with a completely available and cheap energy. And this is all that I wanted to introduce to you in the possible application of nanomaterials in smart sustainable cities.